after a government crackdown on nationalist dissent and simmering tension with volatile neighbours, will changes to the constitution of Armenia enhance the stability of this South Caucasus nation or just help cement its president's hold on power? In July this year, Armenia was rocked when gunmen in its capital, Yerevan, seized a police station, taking nine hostages, killing one and wounding two others. During the subsequent siege, thousands poured onto the streets, not to protest at the killing, but to call for a peaceful resolution to the crisis and to support the hostage takers' two main demands. The resignation of the country's president, Shirs Sargsyan, and the release of Jira Sifilian, a populist war hero and arch critic of the government who had been detained a month earlier. The authorities' response was uncompromising to say the least. There were photos of women whose skin was sort of burned off. Um, the 17 year old lost his eye. Um, there's people still on crutches walking. It's been months, you know, it's, it, the, the crackdown was really, really heavy, but people still came out. <laughs> The former Soviet Republic of Armenia is situated in the beautiful but turbulent South Caucasus. It was the first kingdom to adopt Christianity but no country has had a more troubled past. We are in a very tricky geopolitical situation. Oh, we are surrounded by um, large, powerful and unfriendly neighbors, um, one to the east, which is Azerbaijan, and one to the west, Turkey. This is a memorial in Yerevan in memory of the one and a half million men, women and children who perished at the hands of the Ottomans in 1915. Seventy years under the communist yoke was followed in 1988 by a bitter six-year war over a disputed border territory called Nagorno-Karabakh. The conflict is still unresolved and causing distress today. Nagorno-Karabakh is the nerve of Armenian politics. It is also the raw nerve of Armenian populace because each Armenian family that has a son aged 18 and over has to serve in the Armenian army for two years. And we have on average 20 to 40 deaths a year just from uh, sniper fire. Nagorno-Karabakh is a rugged and beautiful swathe of land claimed by both Armenia and neighboring Azerbaijan in a deadly tug of war stretching back centuries. Though officially recognized as part of Azerbaijan, it remains under the armed control of an Armenian proxy known as the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic. This is the village of Talish on the front line a flourishing community until last April when it came under Azeri bombardment. The village was overrun with Azeri soldiers. Although it's now back in Armenian hands, due to the risk of sniper fire, the villagers have fled. Pastoren 
Antanur Arma, Bamboch and Taskum, Parzvets was diversion from Bikovmits, Guri, Yerek, Benagishner, Tarets Martik, Pastoren, Spanvelein, diversion from Bikovmits, Iren Stan Nersun. For decades, close ties with Moscow ensured that Armenia could punch above its weight and maintain military supremacy in this frozen conflict. But during last April's flare-up, it became clear that the geopolitical fault lines were shifting. While Armenia relied on Soviet-era arms, Azerbaijan began deploying state-of-the-art weaponry recently acquired from Russia, giving it the upper hand. When prized territory was lost, many Armenians began to wonder about the value of their country's long-standing relationship with the Kremlin. Russia has sold five billion dollars worth of weapons to Azerbaijan. Is Russia still a good ally? Take love you what you must see. You must do not choke horses. But the same was a stony dash to China. Naive mez at Uni Razma Technica Gan, Amagot, Sam Nate Saragir. Yarke. It is a menkel ning, menkel pick, mess to chink da, mer dash nag se het hakamarto go min zink vachale. Others are more anxious about the consequences of Russia's conduct. I think the war has changed the paradigm in, in a couple ways. Firstly, in seeing Russia not as an ally anymore, but as a cause for concern. Um, and secondly, that Armenian domestic politics are just not sustainable. In practice, all this means that this current regime in Yerevan is under growing pressure. President Shir Sogsyan came to power in a disputed election in 2008, after which mass demonstrations were brutally put down, leaving 10 dead. A former communist leader, he has been accused of being too close to Moscow by his critics, who claim that Russia sees Armenia as a colony to play with as they wish. Nonetheless, four years of detailed preparations for signing an association agreement with the EU were dashed by Sargsyan after one meeting with Putin. He opted instead for closer ties to Putin's rival Eurasian organization. That overnight decision of Sarkisyan, um, unilateral, <laughs> if you will, decision to um, drop the association agreement and uh, enter the Eurasian Economic Union, came as a surprise to the whole country, including the political establishment. A Russian base in Gimri, Armenia's second city, has also proved controversial. And last year, outrage was sparked when Valery Pemyakov a Russian soldier from the base killed seven members of an Armenian family. The Kremlin's refusal to hand over its soldier to the Armenian authorities for many months after the killings made the situation even worse. It was absolutely shocking. That was just such a traumatic event for the whole country. The funeral was televised. I mean, it was absolutely devastating seeing the coffins together and a grieving country. And then to have the Russians refuse to hand him over, it was definitely a tipping point. Gimri has a history of deadly incidents involving Russian soldiers. 
but the base provides jobs for the poverty-stricken town, which almost 40 years on still bears the scars of a horrific earthquake that killed thousands. However, in the wake of demonstrations against the president, some believe the base poses a far more serious threat, that the troops could be used to ensure that Sargsyan remains in power. Theoretically, they could be used, unfortunately. And several statements uh, by the Russian politics and the ambassador of the Russian Yerevan showing that they became very angry when some tensions are rising up in the Armenia. Amidst growing discontent, President Sargsyan has sought to tighten his grip on power. Last December's referendum on changes to the constitution, nicknamed Sargsyan's Project, may have enabled him to keep control of Armenia. Voters were asked to decide whether or not to change Armenia from a presidential to a parliamentary republic. Почему вдруг сам президент СССР Сарксян решил перейти на парламентское правление и, и, и менять конституцию? Дело в том, что несмотря на то, что у нас вот такой вертикаль власти, но все же один и тот же человек может только два срока быть президентом. Эти реформы имела одна цель, чтобы после истечения срока президентства он был премьером уже так называемой парламентской республики. It's a charge the president strongly rejects. But the criticisms have kept on coming. The referendum, which was monitored by observers and NGOs, was roundly condemned for a lack of transparency. It was completely uh, falsified. Uh, observers have witnessed uh, multiple violations and how the results were falsified. And our uh, elections monitoring also shows that there have been inconsistencies which indicate that the elections were not done in a free and fair manner. Even so, Sargsyan only just achieved the numbers necessary for a change to the constitution. Would you consider running for prime minister under the new constitution? To many Armenians, though, such questions are a distraction from their real problems, especially the million or so who live below the breadline, roughly one third of the population. Perhaps more than anywhere, Kordzoranyan on the outskirts of Yerevan symbolizes the collapse in Armenia's economy. A vast industrial wasteland, it's like a set for a post-apocalyptic movie, providing a suitably decaying backdrop to an unpalatable story that for many Armenians is out of sight and out of mind. For it is here that some of Armenia's war veterans, along with the widows of soldiers killed in Nagorno-Karabakh, eke out an existence. There are around 20,000 such war veterans in Armenia. Such people feel abandoned by the state 
largely existing in squalor and poverty. But despite their economic plight, veterans' rights are seen by many Armenians as a noble cause because of the sacrifices they've made to protect precious lands. It's perhaps unsurprising then that many were outraged when the president said publicly this summer that the territories lost during the April war were of no tactical or strategic importance. 800 hectares of land were lost during the recent confrontation that had an extremely negative resonance with the people, um, especially with the families who lost their sons in, in, in this fighting. So they were defending strategically unimportant and tactically unimportant land. The man who has most prominently expressed these concerns is Jira Sefilian, an ardent nationalist and a war veteran himself. His founding parliament movement can draw on many thousands of supporters who refuse to participate in elections due to violence and a lack of political transparency. What is the founding parliament? The founding parliament says that First of all, we have no sovereignty. We need to regain our sovereignty. There is no democracy in Armenia. Uh, there is no constitutional rule in Armenia. Alek Yeni Komshan speaks for Sefilian and the movement. But like many in this complex story, he too is a controversial figure. He was blinded in 1980 while preparing a bomb for the Armenian secret army for the liberation of Armenia, a now defunct terrorist group. Jira Sefilian, as uh, one of the main leaders of founding parliament, is the representative of this genuine opposition. Sefilian had a history of being in prison. Ten years ago, he was arrested and his case went all the way to the European court and he won it there. Again today, his recent arrest uh, was connected to his political beliefs, his um, very vocal political behavior. Sefilian's appeal has grown steadily amongst ordinary Armenians. And when in May, rumors spread that Moscow wanted Armenia to relinquish more lands around Nagorno-Karabakh, Sefilian's popularity reached a new level. Jira Sefilian said that, OK, it is your responsibility as the president of Armenia to be the garant of uh, Armenian lands. You do not do it, but I myself am ready to do it. And he called upon his ex-comrades in arms of the Harappa war to retake those territories. Soon after, Sefilian was arrested, and within weeks, the country was in the grips of the hostage crisis, when 31 gunmen seized the central police station in Yerevan, killing a policeman in the raid. The situation is going from bad to worse. Uh, no means to change it by peaceful and democratic means. So this group of people who were members or uh, supporters of founding parliament decided that if there is no shock operation, nothing would change. As well as the resignation of the president, the hostage takers demanded the release of Sefilian, but the man standing against them is equally uncompromising. <laughs> The hostage crisis sparked the biggest political unrest for a decade. Thousands poured onto the streets. When the takeover happened, I was surprised to see an outpouring of support for them. And I think it's not because the public agreed with their violent methods, but it just exemplifies the sheer frustration of the Armenian public with its leaders. You had a situation where an armed group seized a police station, shot somebody dead, and yet 
Some people seem to be supporting their demands. But in Chile, our mamale, I think that the body of the group is aggressive for Kramas not soon. Yes, Karo and this bear was not the word in Agnesh, or Zargatsat, the Barakitsi, Europa, Kangir Karnidis, Bori Banachutsan, in short, Mihat Vats, or in next Satarume, Shatsaner, Hansa Gord, Suner, Kataras, Martans. In Chile, our manum. There is no evidence of violence on the part of the protesters last July. On the contrary, march organizers like opposition politician Armen Marchirashan in the orange shirt can be seen here talking to riot police in an attempt to keep the peace. Nevertheless, he was seized and arrested. <laughs> Люди спокойно демонстрацию свою делали, и мы тоже. Если меня признают виновным, то статья разрешается, чтобы меня осуждали от 4 до 10 лет. But as the footage appears to show, it was the police who attacked the demonstrators rapidly firing numerous rocket-projected stun grenades and throwing handheld stun grenades into the peaceful crowds. <laughs> Journalists were directly targeted. Sometimes that's the, the feeling that you're being watched, but other times you can express your opinions, you can be very critical, you can be almost satirical, and uh, you can get away with it until you don't. Rubina Margosian is editor at CivilNet, an independent internet TV channel which covered the violence despite having its cameraman badly beaten. What happened in those days, like detentions from streets and homes, up to 800 people were detained and a lot of it was unlawful. So uh, this is something people had experienced in small, smaller doses before, but not in an age of so much communication. According to a plethora of NGOs, 100 people were hospitalized after the police used excessive force. 33 civilians received fractures, 47 had shrapnel wounds, 7 civilians had burns, and a teenager lost his eye. Yes, the siege finally came to an end on the 29th of July when the gunmen surrendered. Dozens of activists remain in custody. Many more have gone underground. Throughout that entire uh, two-week process, there wasn't a single um, a political leader or executive that made a statement, even as simple as my condolences to the family of the police officer who was killed during the siege. You know, not even that. The men that took up arms were largely seen as positive, strong figures in Armenian recent history because many of them were veterans of Nagorno-Karabakh war and these individuals are highly revealed in our, uh, revered in our society. So they were at laws how to react. The next elections under the new constitution are scheduled for May when Armenia becomes a parliamentary republic and few doubt that Sargsyan will be its first prime minister with a distinct possibility of yet more protests. Many Armenians are hoping that by then, the government will have come up with a better reaction than grenades and detentions.